Well, good morning from the Vicarage Garden on this Easter morning. Let's pray. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light, set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages to him, be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. By his holy and glorious wounds, may Christ our Lord guard and keep us. As we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through this paschal mystery, we have died and been buried with him in baptism. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and our neighbour? May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. For in our baptism, God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Therefore, I ask, do you turn to Christ as your savior? Do you submit to Christ as your Lord? Do you come to Christ who is the way, the truth and the life? Christ is our light. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered glory, fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exalt in glory. The risen Saviour shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right that with full hearts and minds and voices, we should praise you, the unseen God, the Father Almighty, and your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has saved us by his death and paid the price of Adam's sin, reconciling us to you once again. Glory to you forever. For this is the Passover feast when Christ, the true Lamb of God, was slain, whose blood consecrates the homes of all the faithful. Glory to you forever. This is the night when you first saved our ancestors, freeing Israel from her slavery and leading her safely through the sea. Glory to you forever. This is the night when Jesus vanquished hell, broke the chains of death and rose triumphant from the grave. Glory to you forever. 
This is the night when all who believe in him are freed from sin, restored to grace and holiness, and share in the victory of Christ. Glory to you for ever. Most blessed of all nights, when wickedness is put to flight and sin is washed away, lost innocence regained, and morning turns to joy. Glory to you for ever. Night truly blessed, when hatred is cast out, peace and justice find a home, and heaven is joined to earth, and all creation is reconciled to you. Therefore, Heavenly Father, in the joy of this night, accept our sacrifice of praise, your church's solemn offering, and grant that this Easter candle may make our darkness light. For Christ the morning star has risen in glory, Christ is risen from the dead, and his flame of love still burns within us. Christ sheds his peaceful light on all the world, and lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Good morning and welcome to this service of Holy Communion from St Mary's here in Sandersted. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the disciples went to the tomb and they found that the stone had been rolled away. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, through the resurrection of your Son, you have opened a new and living way into your presence. Free us from all sin and fear. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, by your death on the cross, you have broken the power of sin and death. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you are the indwelling life of God. Cleanse and sweeten the springs of our being. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And so the collect for this Easter Sunday. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. And so our first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10, beginning at verse 34. Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, for he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good deeds and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. 
We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For you have died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we come to the time of our Gospel reading, we're going to have a hymn sung by the choir of St Mary's here in Sandersted. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, but we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first always went in. And he saw and believed, for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. 
But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look inside, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. After dying in an accident, three friends arrived in heaven where they were all asked the same question. When you're in your coffin with your family and your friends mourning over you, what would you like to hear them say? The first man said, well, I'd like to hear them say that I was one of the greatest doctors of my time and a good man. The second said, well, I'd like to hear them say that I was a wonderful husband, a great teacher, and I made a massive difference in children's lives. The last man thought for a moment and replied, what I'd like to hear them say is, look, he's moving. <laughs> Cemeteries can, for some, be quite spooky places. I read an amusing but true story about a man in Scotland who we shall call Ian McGregor. After a long evening in the pub, Ian took a shortcut to his house that took him through a dark cemetery where he accidentally fell into a freshly dug grave. Ian tried to get out but discovered that the hole was too deep so he just decided to wait until morning when someone would come and help him. So there he sat in the corner covering himself with his coat and he eventually fell off to sleep. A little time later he was awakened by the sound of another man who fell into the grave too. Not seeing Ian huddled up in the corner, he tried to no avail to get out. Finally, Ian said in his Scottish accent, Stop your trying, you canna get out. The man screamed and literally leapt out of the grave in a single bound. The saying, as quiet as the grave, is not said without reason, because people don't tend to come out of them. The truth of Christianity hinges on one event the empty grave of Jesus. If the resurrection did not happen, then we are, as St Paul says, wasting our time. It's only the resurrection that gives us hope that there is life after death. Before Jesus died, he's told his disciples that they would all forsake him, and each one of them said, no, not me. They did that because they were frightened. But out of love for their master, the women had gone to the tomb very early and discovered that the seal over the one and a half ton stone which covered the tomb of Jesus was broken and his body was gone. Now bearing in mind that at that time it was instant death by crucifixion upside down if you were caught breaking a Roman seal and that the Romans themselves were guarding the tomb and the disciples were so afraid that they'd even denied Jesus and ran away it is unlikely that someone came and stole the body. We had a lecture at college where I did my training in Cambridge about whether something happens to you when you're ordained, whether God changes you in some way that makes you different. At the time, I said no. But as I knelt before the bishop, I changed that opinion because something did change the day I was ordained. And I remember writing in my journal, I know that I can never go back. I am changed. From the moment the disciples saw Jesus, they were changed forever. 
It is said the only way that we can live life is if we grow, and the only way we grow is if we change. The great and wonderful message of the Easter story is that we come as we are, broken, wounded and in need of a saviour, but the reality is we don't stay the same. When we encounter Jesus we are changed forever and we simply cannot go back. Our reading this morning recounts that moment that the lives of the disciples changed. They went from being fearful people hiding in a locked room to a group of people who literally turned the known world upside down. It is believed that John was the only apostle who didn't come to a brutal and untimely death, but reached a good old age. And it's said that when he was old and riddled with arthritis, he had to be carried around to meetings on a bed where he used to say no more than love one another, love one another. I imagine people gathering around that white-haired elderly man saying, tell us again how it happened. And John leaning back on his bed saying, it all changed the day we heard a bang at the door. It was Mary standing breathless saying, Jesus has risen. The writer Josh McDowell writes that after more than 700 hours of studying the evidence, he has come to the conclusion that the resurrection of Jesus is either one of the most wicked, vicious, heartless hoaxes ever foisted on the minds of human beings, or it is the most remarkable fact of history. John's account of this event is nothing if not a singular affirmation that a true historical event happened on that first Easter Sunday morning. That's the chief reason why we are given so many details about the character of the empty tomb and the nature of Jesus' resurrection body. John is affirming what so many sadly deny, that Jesus is not a fantasy, but a real man, a resurrected man who can talk and be touched despite the fact that he has been changed by the power of his resurrection. Doubting Thomas, as he is so often called, then steps into the story. I imagine to give those of us who at times doubt a sense of inclusion by arguing that dead people do not come back to life and that he will not believe until he confirms that reality for himself, which of course we read that he does, an event which changes him too. What is it then that turns 11 petrified men hiding in a room fearful for their lives to men who are willing and prepared to die terrible deaths in order to make sure that their story is heard? It surely is an event so powerful, so monumental that they simply cannot keep quiet about it. It is the story that changed history. A young man from a wealthy family was about to graduate from university. It was the custom among those families to buy their children a car as a gift for all of their hard work. Bill spent months looking at different models of cars and a week before his graduation, he found it. On the eve of his graduation, his dad gave him a gift. It was a Bible. He said he couldn't think of a more valuable gift to give his son. But Bill was so angry that he threw the Bible at his father, left the house and they never spoke again. Years later, it was the news that his father had died that brought him home again. And sitting down with all his dad's things, he discovered the Bible that he had been given all those years before. He brushed away the dust and opened it. And there inside was a cashier's cheque dated the day of his graduation, the exact amount for the car they had chosen together. The gift of Easter is only worth something when we open it. It is the greatest story that has ever been told, and it has the power to change us as it did those first disciples, if we will let it. The world gives us many empty promises, and we're told that if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Many of us, I'm sure, have been the recipients of broken promises which have left us sceptical and cold towards the words of others. But God never made a promise that he didn't keep. The resurrection gives us hope in the face of a very unfair world, a world where Jesus said we would have trouble, but to take heart because he had overcome the world. We are, after all, only passing through. This is not our final destination. 
The resurrection gives us strength and courage in the situations that we face, especially at this time. One of the details that St John records in our reading is of a face cloth that is left neatly folded and placed where the head of Jesus lay. It seems a rather odd piece of information to record, which if you don't know Jewish customs means very little. You see, when the servant set the dinner table for the master, they would wait just out of sight until the master had finished eating. The servant wouldn't dare touch the table until the master had finished. When the master was done, he would rise from the table, wipe his fingers, his mouth, clean his beard, and then screw up the napkin and throw it onto the table. And this was the servant's cue that it was time to clear things away. But if the master folded the napkin and laid it aside, the servant knew that the folded napkin meant, I am not yet finished, I am coming back. Peter and John had walked with Jesus for three years. Then they watched him die. And as they watched, all their hopes and their dreams were shattered. They, along with the others, were in the depths of despair, hiding in that upper room, fearing for their very lives. It wasn't how they had planned it. But then, after three days, there was that bang at the door. And it was Mary with the news that she had seen Jesus, for he had risen. And they ran to the tomb, and there they see that napkin folded where Jesus' head had been. It was a sign that they would recognise their master had not finished, he was coming back. When we look into our past, as I sometimes do, we can wonder how we can ever make up for all the mistakes that we have made. And it's true that we are indeed products of our past, but we don't have to be had prisoners by it. If you go to Jerusalem today and to the garden tomb, there is a sign on the door which reads, He is not here. He is risen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember the trauma which your suffering and death brought to your followers. A grief which went beyond words and which seemed beyond healing. We recall how Peter wept bitterly when he realised that he had denied you just as you predicted. How the women sobbed on the way to the cross and as they watched you die, how Mary broke down in the garden, overwhelmed with grief each one a symbol of the desolation and despair that so many felt at your death. 
but we recall also how Peter rejoiced as three times you repeated your call, how your followers celebrated as you stood among them risen and victorious, how Mary's heart soared with wonder as you spoke her name. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, please grant your joy. We pray for those who suffer today, all who endure constant pain, who wrestle with illness, who are victims of violence, or whose bodies are broken by accidents or injuries. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, please grant your joy. We pray for those who feel betrayed today, cheated by loved ones, deceived by those they trusted, hurt by those they counted as friends or let down by society. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, please grant your joy. We pray for those who grieve today, their hearts broken by tragedy and bereavement, their lives torn apart many for whom tears are a constant companion, laughter and happiness like some distant memory. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, please grant your joy. Lord Jesus Christ, reach out into our world of so much pain, heartache and sadness. May your light scatter the shadows, your love lift the burdens, and your grace bring life in all its fullness. Gracious Lord, wherever there is sorrow, please grant your joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and he stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in women and men the image of your glory. He has placed them once again in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. For on the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint James and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. So let's pray. 
God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection has delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. May God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.